When we talk about the solution to differential equations, one very important concept is the state transition matrix. This concept is particularly useful when we're talking about linear time invariance systems, as we'll see in class. Brogan defines the state transition matrix as the matrix phi, cap phi, which is a function of t and t naught, some initial time, which describes how the system evolves from one state, x of t naught, to some new state, x of t, over the inter interval t to t naught. So for the system, say, x dot of t is equal to a of t times x of t, notice this is a homogeneous system, and notice that the state matrix is a function of time. So we would say this is a linear time variant system. Then the state transition matrix can be found as cap phi of t comma t naught. And finding this in general is a, is a bit difficult. Um, so, but we can write down once we know it that x of t, the solution to this differential equation, is just cap phi of t and t naught times the initial condition, x of t naught. So this solution, x of t, is the product of the state transition matrix with the initial condition. And in state space, we can really think of this as saying the following. If I have, say, two states, say x1 and x2 in my state space, and I start at some place over here, say, x of t naught in state space, then, and let's say over time, the system evolves over to some other place over here, which is, say, x of t, then the state transition matrix tells me what this transition or what this trajectory looks like. And we can think of any point along here as being phi, sin, ti, uh, which is a function of t and t naught times the initial condition x of t naught. So this point here might be, say, x of t1. So it really tells you how you can get from one location in the state space to the, some other location. For linear time invariant systems, this whole situation simplifies quite a bit. And we have x dot of t is equal to a of times x of t. Then, and this is homogeneous again. In this case, the state transition matrix, say phi of t and t naught, is equal to e to the a t minus t naught. Now this a here is the matrix a, not a scalar. And so this whole thing here is called the matrix exponential. And we would need to calculate it in a particular way. Let's just say for uh, to make our life easier that t naught is just equal to 0. Then we have e to the a t is equal to cap phi of t and 0. And now we can write down that x of t is just equal to e to the a t times the initial condition, t naught. Now, let me do a short example to show how e what this looks like. Let's let our differential equation be defined by x dot is equal to 2 times x. Now, this is a very simple uh, scalar differential equation. And we notice then that a is just 2. And we know, just from trying to solve this differential equation, that the solution would look like x of t is equal to e to the 2t times the initial condition on the uh, state x. Well, this is very clearly just e to the a t. There's the initial condition, and there's the solution. So in the scalar case, it's actually quite simple to find the matrix exponential. Let's look at a slightly more complicated case. Let's have uh, let's look at the case when uh, we have x1 dot is equal to 2x1 and x2 dot is equal to x2. Now, in this case, these are two non uncoupled differential equations. And, and this is a very simple example, and I'm doing it on purpose. But in this case, we would have x the vector x dot is equal to the matrix 2, 0, 0, 1 times x. 
notice again homogeneous. Now we also know that the solution to this differential equation is the same as the previous example. And the solution to this differential equation is just e to the t. Now, these are, these are very simple uh, systems, and they're uncoupled. And we can then write down that the solution in time is just equal to the, uh, and notice um, this, is, uh, uh, this would be x1. And then we would have, say, x2 of t is equal to e to the t times x2 naught uh, are the initial conditions. So this would just be e to the 2t times and the 0, 0, e to the t times the initial condition, which is just x1 at 0 and x2 at 0, right? which is just equal to e to the 2t x1 at 0 times e to the t at x2 at 0. Now, in this case, when the matrix is diagonal, the state matrix is diagonal, the state uh, transition matrix, or the matrix exponential, the e to the at thing, is simply uh, is pretty easy to find. We just take the exponential of the diagonal term. Notice uh, times t. Notice we did not take the exponential of the off-diagonal term. So calculating this thing is actually a little bit tricky. What if what if the system were something a bit more complicated? Say, let's say that uh, x1 dot were equal to 2x2, and that x2 dot were equal to, say, x1. In this case, we can write down, again, our state space representation as x dot is equal to 0, 2, 1, 0 times x1, x2. So here's our state transition matrix. But notice the solution is not uh, 0 e to the 2t e to the t 0 times x1 naught and x2 naught. So in the case where this system is coupled and this state matrix is non-diagonal, this idea doesn't work. So we're no good there. But if we could try to find a set of coordinates, right, a state space representation, a set of state coordinates where the state matrix was diagonal, then we could use this idea to try to find the state space representation. So really what we want to do is take this idea of the matrix exponential and couple it with this idea of diagonalization, which we found in one of the previous uh, lectures, to see if we can decouple the state, the states of the system. If we can do that, then the tr solution is actually quite obvious.